Caitlin and welcome to my channel Kate Makes, the channel where I make things. If you haven't been here before, on this channel I bring you along on my sewing journey and try to bring my dream Pinterest wardrobe to life. So as you can see here, I am standing next to the customary rack of clothing for these year-end reviews. I am super excited to make this video because this is the first year I've had this YouTube channel, so this is the first time that I actually get to create one of these wrap-up videos myself. I've always loved watching these. I love to see what other sewists, other creators make throughout the year, where their inspirations took them, or how their skills progressed. So I think these are super fun to watch. I'm very excited that I get to create my own now. So I hope you enjoy this little journey of going through each of my makes. Um, I'm going to talk about, you know, what patterns I use, what I would do differently, how they have been since I've made them. Some of these have YouTube videos, quite a few of them don't because my YouTube channel is so new. If you haven't watched my other videos, make sure to go check them out. I'll link everything uh, that I referenced down below. And also, if you like this, make sure to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell. I would love to have you around here more often. As I mentioned, I'm a new channel. I just started this this summer and I've had so much fun making YouTube videos. I love it here, so I plan on sticking around. I would love it if you would stick around too. And yeah, let's get into it. <laughs> Okay, so right now this is all hung pretty much in the order that I made it to the best of my memory. <laughs> so I'm gonna walk you through each one. There are 15 pieces hanging on this rack right now. I did make more things than is on this rack, but this is everything that I made for myself. Anything that isn't shown are things that I have gifted to other people. So maybe at the end I'll kind of go over the other things that I made for other people that didn't make it onto this rack, but for now, let's focus on what I have on hand. If I wear them, if I like them, what I would do different, you know, which pattern I used or if I self-drafted it, the general info, I think you know how these videos go. Okay, so first up is the first YouTube video that I ever posted and um, my earliest make of the year. I think I didn't make it until like spring or summer too. I kind of took the whole winter off last year. And if you haven't been around here before, I am only in my like second year of sewing. I haven't been doing this a super long time, um, but I think I'm getting better and better, I hope. <laughs> so. Anyway, this is the Lydia Naomi confetti frock dress. I did tweak it a bit. So the upper half is completely how the pattern is. The bottom part of the skirt, I wung a bit. So it has pockets, which I love. In general, this make, I love it. Uh, it's definitely been one of my most worn makes to date. I feel like a princess in this dress. I did the dropped V, like medieval kind of waist. I can't think of what the word for that is right now, <laughs> but um, I did that waist that makes me feel like a princess and I love it. I also used quite a bit of fabric for the skirt and um, yeah, it's just finished really well inside and out. I did my first side zipper on this and it turned out great and yeah, just, the whole thing is finished really well. I love this pattern. I love the fabric that I use for this. This was like a, a Lyocell something, like an eco fabric that I love. I need to find more of this. It's so buttery, I wish you could feel it. Um, <laughs> I need to make more things in this. Be so comfortable to wear, really, really comfortable. And the fabric is heavy, so it just feels like nice and substantial love it. Um, the only thing is I do think I need to take it in a bit. I think that this fabric does stretch out as you wear it. So even if I freshly wash it and put it on, then it's still not super tight. And as I wear it throughout the day, it stretches out. So I think um, as far as like a review of this, I think this year I will try to take it in a smidge in the waist um, just to make sure that it fits me really well all day long. But yeah, that's the first make down. Moving on. Okay, my next one I have to say is kind of wrinkly. I did try to steam this. Um, this will be my main <laughs> critique of this piece is that I made it in 100% linen and I had never done that before. I really want to try to use sustainable fabrics, natural fabrics. I like to try and thrift fabrics. I just, I like to try and be really conscious about what fabrics I am buying and using 
And anyway, I have been wanting to try out linen because I had mostly been using cotton or cotton blends up to this point. Anyway, <laughs> this is a hack of the Lydia Naomi Dream Frog pattern. Quite a lot of hacking, really. Just the top, pretty much, is the Lydia Naomi pattern, and it's really just the, uh, the front part of it. So I um, hacked it to have these tie straps. I hacked the back so that it sits really low and ties in the back. And then I also added boning for the first time in any project. All of it went really well. It does fit me wonderfully. And then I use a separate pattern, sort of, for this skirt. I think it's mostly self-drafted. It was kind of just for the waist panel that I used a pattern. But all of it turned out great. It's beautiful. However, because I made it in linen, it wrinkles like crazy, which is what linen does. But the problem that I realized is that because this pattern has so much gathering involved, <laughs> the gathers really collect extra wrinkles. When I use linen in the future, I'm definitely not going to do it on something that has a lot of gathering. I'm going to do it on something that's really easy to iron, that's mostly straight lines, because this is a nightmare to iron. And this skirt especially has a ton of fabric, which I love. It makes it so fun to twirl in, but to try and iron it, oh my gosh, guys. Or even to try to seam it, crazy, craziness. So yeah, that's really my only critique. I love how it turned out. I kind of want to remake the same thing, but in a different fabric because yeah, it just hasn't gotten a lot of use because I'm just a little too lazy to iron all this linen. Okay, so that is this one, on to the next. Next up, I have two dresses. These have both gotten a lot of wear also. Highly recommend this pattern. This is the My Ardor Graduation Dress and it fits incredibly. <laughs> this is such like a great bodycon dress that you can make yourself. It's so fast to sew up because it's just the two panels and then the lining. So it's basically just the cutting that's the main labor of this. So, and there's no zipper, nothing. You just use stretch fabric. So hugely recommend this pattern, especially if you're a beginner. It is fabulous. It looks amazing on. I'm going to make it some more. <laughs> um, I'll put clips in of me wearing both of these. These first few I have shown in another video I did where I went over all the things I made in my first year of sewing. So right now we're still in that first year uh, cutoff. But yeah, so these are still fairly early on in the process. So I have kind of gone over these dresses before, but just briefly, um, I'll let you know that this did not, this doesn't have a panel in the pattern. This was actually a mistake that I made that I fixed with this um, and I used lining fabric, which is not the best. I wish that I had just gotten some nicer white fabric, but basically I used a really not stretchy enough fabric to try and make this pattern. So it was too small. So I had to add the panels um, in the side, but love this dress. And um, I've just love it in general. I think it's really cute to like make casual or to wear dressed up. Lots of versatility in that one. And then this one is so beautiful. This fabric, I did not buy for this. It was something I had um, for a different project and then I ended up using it for this. Unfortunately, this fabric snags so easily for some reason. I have no idea why. I wore it with a purse um, and it created like all this pilling and snags on the back. So I love this one so much and it fits so well. I love the colors I did and everything but I am planning on remaking this in, with different fabric, but I'm going to remake this exact thing because it's so, so nice. <laughs> I did the longer length on this one and it comes down like somewhere mid calf probably. And it's so elegant and pretty. This one, I did the mini version, but that one is really easy to adjust the length. I remember someone commented and asked if it was um, like friendly for shorter girls. For reference, I'm 5'4 for all of this. Length was great for me being that tall, but this is such an easy thing to hack whatever length you need. Definitely friendly for the shorter or taller girls. Whatever your height is, very adjustable pattern. Love it. Okay. Moving on, <laughs> I'm struggling because I don't want this video to be too crazy long, but I also just like want to go on and on about all these things. If you're a maker yourself, I'm sure like <laughs> if you're given the opportunity to talk about something that you've made, you just want to like say all the things about it. <laughs> you want to go on and on because you spend so much, I have spent so much time on these 
garments and you know the process of making them and then afterwards like thinking about what I would do differently or all of that so sorry if this gets long-winded I will try to keep it brief but just putting a little disclaimer that I'm having way too much fun talking about these so <laughs> we'll see next is another very very hacked pattern so I'll start off by saying that I used the free mood fabrics pattern the mal dress I made that dress for my best friend while she was pregnant and I thought it would be a great maternity one because it has an empire waist and um, I did it so that it, I added like a tie on hers so that she could kind of cinch it in once she was um, no longer pregnant and I added them really long so she kind of wrap it like a belt. The dress itself, the mal dress, is really great. Super cottage core, oversized, comfy kind of dress. Definitely recommend if you're pregnant or nursing or just want a comfy dress. Um, I might make it in the future because I still have that pattern and I did really like the the one that I made for my best friend. I wish I had a photo of it. Someday I'll make her put it on and have a picture of it. But anyway, <laughs> this is after I made that one, I had this linen suiting, which was not the right fabric to use for this, just so we know. I made hers in a cotton and it seemed much more right. But um, I also adjusted the neckline, so this really isn't the neckline of the mal dress either. It's just basically the mal dress. It's mostly the mal dress. The back is, the sleeves are. Um, this is where the skirt would be added on, um, but I adjusted the neckline to be more open. I think it's, um, I think it's a circular, uh, it's definitely a higher necked piece, um, but I wanted it to have a square and a little bit lower neckline and it didn't work out as well as you can see the facing. This doesn't happen when I wear it, but when it's hanging, which kind of bothers me, the facing will flip out a little bit, but still this turned out okay. I wear it, especially when I was working from home. This was like a great top for, you know, being cute on the upper half <laughs> for uh, FaceTime or Skype or whatever um, for meetings. And then the skirt, there was no pattern involved. I had a rectangle of skirt left over and I had decided after I made this that I didn't want to make it a like connected dress. I wanted to have two pieces. And so I made this wrap skirt. I'll put in clips of me actually wearing this. Um, but basically I just cut out the shape that I thought a wrap skirt should be. <laughs> and um, yeah, really just did like through trial and error, made myself a wrap skirt. So um, turned out okay. Uh, basically, I think this would, this would be great if it was made in a flowier, less heavy fabric. Because it's suiting, I think that it um, just doesn't hang quite as well as I would like it to. It kind of will fold in on itself. You could maybe see in the clip that I show you. This hasn't got a ton of wear, basically. I've worn it some, not as much as I would like. So I don't know what the future holds for this. I'm gonna keep hanging on to it. I might make some sort of edit to it at some point or remake it in a different fabric. But for now, it suits its purpose. I wear it sometimes. <laughs> If you um, are a detail-oriented person, you might have noticed that the order of these clothes just switched slightly. <laughs> I just realized that I had um, one of my dresses a little too uh, far forward. I just made it in November, so it has moved. Next up is another Lydia Naomi pattern. This is the bubble frock dress pattern, but she also provides a top in there um, so that you can just make it as a top, which I did. I mainly did this. This was out of some scrap fabric. This was thrifted black material um, and I, oh, it's the same black fabric that I used to make this dress. So I don't know, this was like a tablecloth or something. I'm not really sure what the content is. It's almost like a scuba kind of feeling. It's a mystery fabric because it's thrifted. So um, it's really nice and thick though, which I like. It's pretty substantial on its own. Highly recommend the bubble frog pattern. I have made it as a top. Later I'll show you I've made it as a dress as well. So easy, really fast one to sew up. Another great one to do um, if you want something last minute or if you want a beginner friendly project, great for that. Um, in this top, I did the option where you interface the top, which is why I keep trying to like put it back in <laughs> order. When you wear it, it obviously doesn't bend in at all, but hanging on the hanger, it sort of folds in on itself. 
but I interfaced the upper portion and then this is fully lined. Um, I love when a garment looks just as good on the inside as it does on the outside and that one, this one is definitely it. Like I remember finishing this project and thinking like, wow, I can actually make something look professional. I remember that being like a really great feeling. I was starting to have that feeling like throughout this time period and I kind of felt it on the confetti frock too. And I think it helps that Lydia Naomi's instructions are so great. That's why I love her patterns because she just makes it easier to make a project that looks professional because she finishes off her projects really well. So like when I wing things, I, you know, I know that it's not quite as like fancy on the inside as I would like it to be. This one's fancy on the inside too, which we like. <laughs> so um, anyway, this is just as the top. Um, it's gotten a pretty decent amount of wear. I initially made this just because I had that leftover fabric and I knew I wanted to try to make a bubble frock dress. So I sort of figured, eh, let's try the top and see how it goes. Um, you know, not really gonna lose out on anything. I've already made a dress out of that material. That was probably $4. Um, and I actually love it. I wear it quite a bit. So really great, super comfortable. Um, would make again, highly recommend. Next is one of my favorite makes. I love this dress. I love the fabric that I chose. I love the like design things that I did. I, this is one of those times when I just kind of let myself be creative and I knew it could either go really well or really poorly. And I felt like it went really well. It feels like a very me dress. I was really like proud of myself for um, kind of going beyond a pattern or going beyond like what I'd maybe seen somewhere else. Like I've really never seen this dress or this outfit anywhere else. This was just kind of like going with my creativity and I can't recommend doing that more. Trying to continue to be confident enough in myself to do that <laughs> again and again, because those are the pieces that I like extra love when I just kind of let myself go where my creative whims take me. So anyway, this is a very hacked Isola dress pattern, um, which is by Patterns by Pattern Co's. The instructions and the video and everything are in Spanish, but they have subtitles and it's super easy to follow. I have used this pattern over and over again. This is one of the first ones that I made myself. Not this dress, but this pattern. I've made it a couple times, so I also feel very comfortable in it now, which is why I was kind of able to just do what I wanted with it. I used the base pattern. I think I lowered the neckline some, and then I added the tie straps, and then I did my very first corset lace-up back. Yeah, and it turned out great. I really love it. I bought a big roll of double-sided bias tape, this black one for this project, and it has been used many times since. Oh, actually, I think I bought it. I bought it initially for this. I will continue to use black bias tape forever, mainly because of how this dress turned out. Like, I just think that this gives it such a cool design. And if I didn't show you already, I'll make sure to put clips in of me wearing it. So this is the Isola dress. I split it. I just did bias binding absolutely everywhere that I could fit it in. And I think it gives it such a unique look. What I really love about this and what it has made it also one of the most worn things that I've made is that you can wear both of these pieces separate and they're still really special and stand out and I love it. <laughs> so wear it together and I've worn it to like parties, to something more like fancy. If you wear it separately, it can still be casual or fancy. Like they're very able to be dressed up or down. They look good with white or black or jeans or whatever. So hugely recommend this pattern. It is a great one to use. It has given me some of my favorite dresses and some of my favorite outfits. So this is definitely one of my favorite makes. And it's funny that I have the least amount of pictures in this one. <laughs> I really just have the one video that I showed you. So I need to wear it again and remember to take pictures because that's something I'm really bad about doing. But yeah, next one. Okay, next up we have the McCall's and Brandy Joan collaboration pattern. This is the M8382. This is very pretty. I really like the fabric I used. This was a, um, you know, really detailed cotton that I got from Joann's. I really like this pattern. I like how it turned out. I do have a whole video on this. I have a video on this one, on the, on the yellow, and then now we're back to being in the videos. <laughs> these, these middle bits that I showed you, I don't have YouTube videos on, but definitely scroll through if you're interested in any of the ones you see. I will link the tutorials or the sew with me's that I have 
below so that if you want to make it yourself, you can do it with me because it's more fun to sew with people. So <laughs> by people, I mean, you know, YouTubers that you're watching while you sew because that's what I do. But anyway, <laughs> I am pretty pleased with how this dress turned out. If you watched that video, I ended up having to alter it and make this second tie because um, the pattern as it was, um, was not stable to wear if you have a larger chest. So I did do a review of this. I think it's a great pattern. I think you might have to like finick with it a little bit um, depending on you know your sizing. But I haven't had a chance to wear it yet because I made it um, in the winter time, even though this is clearly a spring or summer make. I cut it out in the early summer of last year <laughs> and then I moved across the country with the cut pieces with me. <laughs> And so it kind of sat there for a few months and I got back to it and finally made it in the winter. So um, looking forward to once it gets warm and seeing if I, um, you know, wear it a lot or what kind of use I get out of it. But hopefully, um, hopefully it gets lots of use once the weather gets nice and warm again. Um, yeah, so that's this one. I do recommend this pattern, but yeah, definitely check out my video if you want my more in-depth thoughts on like sizing and everything and how it was to make this. So that's this one. Moving on. Next up is technically a thrift flip, but it's also just kind of a made from scratch skirt. I found a square fabric at the thrift store that was like $4 or $3 or something. And I made this skirt out of it. And this skirt, even though I made it like in the late fall has gotten so much wear. I love it. I'm planning on making it in other colors this year. It is fabulous. It fit me perfectly. Just like I just went off of my size. I didn't do a mock-up or anything and I just made it and it fits great. So definitely recommend. This is the Frasia dress pattern. I bought it off of Etsy for like $7. It comes with two different top options, two different skirt options, and then you can also attach them to make two different dresses or four different dresses if you combine them, whatever it is. It's a lot of bang for your buck, basically. I am also planning on making the full dress version soon. Um, but yeah, as of right now, I just have this one skirt. It has gotten lots of use. I'll put in the clips of me wearing it. Um, but yeah, highly recommend in a nice flowy fabric. I've worn this so much since the fall um, with tights, you know, with boots, with flats, with all different kinds of tops. It goes with everything. I'm again, 5'4". The length of this, just at what the pattern recommended, was perfect. It looked a little bit long to me, I remember when I first cut it out, but actually just going with it and seeing how it looked, it's like the perfect length of a mini skirt. You feel totally comfortable. I have had mini skirts in the past where it's like I don't wear them because I don't feel covered enough or I just feel like you can't move around in them. Like this is the perfect length of a mini skirt. So um, yeah, definitely recommend. Really easy and fast to sew up. There's a couple darts in here. There's the back zip and a couple slits, but like really it was super quick. Can't wait to make this again. Definitely recommend. This one is fully a thrift flip. I was kind of torn on whether or not to include it in this because I'm really doing like my sewing projects. But sewing did go into this, so I don't know where we stand on like do thrift flips count in the year in review or is it just fully things we've made from scratch. I feel like they should count depending on like, I guess if you just like hem the bottom of something like that's not really qualifying, but I feel like I did enough to this where it counts. <laughs> so this was, I believe a nightgown, not really sure, but I found this at the thrift store for very cheap. It was um, way too large on me. It had like the um, very nightgown kind of adjustable straps, but that were really um, poorly done, had really like cheap plastic, you know, sliders or whatever. I just thought that the fabric was so pretty. It's such a nice satin. I really like um, how shiny it is and how shiny the flowers are. Maybe isn't the right word because I feel like shiny sounds like it looks cheap, but I just thought it looked really expensive for what it was. And I just love the colors and everything. So anyway, I replaced the straps with these ribbon tie straps, which I think look so cute. And then I took it up all along the entire bodice and everything. So that was really it, just the straps and taking it in. But that's the first time I've done that. And for some reason, editing something that has already been created is scarier to me than making something from scratch. Comment below if you feel the same or if this is just totally a me thing. But for some reason, I have so much more fear and like anxiety of taking something that's already well made and then possibly messing it up. When I first started, I shouldn't say this is my first time 
doing that. I did buy a trench coat and take it in. That was the whole reason why I got my sewing machine. That's what started me on my entire journey was just desperately wanting a trench coat and finding a huge men's trench coat that I decided to take up myself. But that was just really like sewing lines and I really didn't know what I was doing then. I feel like now that I know more of what I'm doing, I'm actually like more afraid of editing garments just because I know what goes into making these things. And so I always feel funny, you know, possibly ruining it. <laughs> Luckily this one didn't get ruined, but anyway, let me know if you guys feel the same or how you guys feel about editing already made outfits and basically doing thrift flips and stuff. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, I'm going to have, I'm still using my Christmas mug and all my Christmas decorations are still up. It is <clears throat> January 4th and I am fully in denial still that Christmas is over. I'm so upset. I never like it when Christmas is over. I especially hate taking down the Christmas tree because it's so beautiful and makes everything better. Oh, so I'll stick with my mug and this week I have to work on taking all my stuff down. Also comment below if your Christmas stuff is still up. Please make me feel better or feel free to make me feel worse, I guess, for, you know, I think some people take it down like January 1st, but oh my gosh, I just, I love Christmas too much. Anyway, I need some tea to get through the rest of this talking. <laughs> Next up is a make that I am very, very proud of and excited about. Because there is interfacing in here, I feel like when it's hung up, it does this wrinkling thing that doesn't look great. I'll make sure to put the clips of me wearing it because it doesn't look like that when it's actually on. But this is the birthday dress that I made for myself. This is also my best performing YouTube video. So thank you if you watched it. If you haven't watched it, go check it out. It's a two-part video. Part one is kind of my whole planning process and I kind of walk you through how I plan all of my makes, especially if I'm not just using a pattern, if I'm like, you know, freewheeling it like this one. And then the second part is really me sewing it and actually, you know, showing you the final product and everything. So again, thank you for making that video do so well for how tiny and new my channel is. Really appreciate that. So I did use a base pattern again, just for the bodice bit. I'm just not really sure how to drape these things yet. So um, <laughs> I keep using this same, the Isola dress pattern, the bodice part of that because works for me every time. I think it's a really great base. It just has the princess seams. It's a really like basic pattern that works and fits me. And I think it's, you know, a good place to start. So I used that for the top. I did this super cute gathered ruffle detail at the top, which I've never known before. And I definitely will be doing again because somehow this tiny detail just makes it like so special and cute to me. This is the second time that I have done boning and like corset details. I did the lace up back again and I did it all in the same fabric, which I think makes it look really like nice and expensive to me at least. I added these like panels um, behind it too so that it wouldn't be like my skin showing in between, which was also a new thing for me. And just did like a self-drafted gathered skirt, of course. In everything I do there are pockets because if you're making a side seam anything and there's not pockets it's just a waste it's just a waste of a garment in my opinion so everything should have pockets I always make them like really big and deep so I I love this dress I didn't wear it for my birthday <laughs> like I mentioned in the video I really kind of just made it for a present for myself because I was just chilling at home for my birthday with some friends I didn't have like a party or anything but I absolutely, if I get a wedding or a baby shower or something, any anything where it's warm enough to wear this, I will be wearing it because it makes me feel so good. I absolutely love it. And it's just, it's one of the more like professionally finished things that I've made. That's still my goal um, because I'm still newer. I just want things to look like I could have bought it from a nice store and I'm getting closer getting much closer. I am very nitpicky and also just still new. So not quite there yet, but getting close, getting pretty close. This one I would have bought somewhere for some money. And it's, I used a linen blend suiting fabric from Joann's for this and it's really heavy and substantial. And that's another thing I've noticed about myself is that I just love really substantial, like thick fabrics. I just, it just feels so much nicer on your body. You just feel like you're wearing something fancy and that like that I would never pay for to you know buy myself <laughs> so all about the like heavy fabrics for sure it just feels fancier to me but hope that you like this one too if not I love it and that's all that matters <laughs> next one 
Okay, another heavy one. My arm is maybe gonna get tired, <laughs> but this was my last make of the year for myself. I'll go over after this the other things that I made um, because they're really great patterns and you should know about them and have them yourself also. But anyway, this is the last thing that I made for myself. I love this dress. Check out this video if you haven't. I had so much fun making this video because it was very like holiday themed. And I used a, this is a quilted velvet. If you can't see, it's like a diamond pattern. Probably can't with this lighting. I'll put in the clips of me wearing it. Maybe you'll be able to tell. But this is the Lydia Naomi bubble frock pattern <laughs> again. And this time I made it as the full length dress and it is glorious. It really, I think that this looks like a designer piece. I think that this looks super expensive and super nice. It feels that way on my body. And it also feels like I'm wearing a blanket, but in a very fashionable way. So you all should make this dress for yourself. You'll put it on and feel magical, I promise. That is how I feel when I wear it. I have worn it around the house. I have worn it I think to get groceries once because I couldn't help myself. I wore it to a holiday party. I am going to wear this dress forever for all the things. <laughs> um, it's great. I love it. And that's all I have to say about it. Again, Lydia Naomi, her instructions are great. You'll end up with a super professionally finished product and it'll be so easy. I think that this, like the full length bubble frock, the whole thing, it'll probably take you like three hours. It took me around that. I was filming and kind of doing other stuff, so I'm really bad at like actually timing myself, but that's like my reasonable guess. I feel like three hours to make this. So <laughs> anyway, that's my last make that I have on hand. Last thing that I don't have right here because it's in the wash is a wrap that I made three of this holiday season. <laughs> It is the New Look 6573. That pattern comes with multiple pieces of clothing. I made the wrap. I made one for myself, I made one for my mom, and I made one for my mother-in-law, and they all seem to really like it. So fast to make, so easy, hugely beginner-friendly project, and really great as a gift because you don't have to know anyone's size. It still is like a special enough piece and can be customized to whoever you're gifting it to. I have a whole video on this, so I won't go on too much. Check that out if you haven't, and that, that is a great piece. The last couple things I wanna go over, I'll just put pictures over here of what I made because again, I have gifted them, so I don't have them on hand, and I have done a terrible job of taking pictures of the things that I have made for other people. And by terrible, I mean not a single picture of the things that I have made. So first off, I made a very cute little pinafore dress for my best friend's twin girls. So I made two of them. I did like these very cute alternating fabrics. I did it in a green cotton and then a green and white checkered cotton. This pattern was super easy, super fast, and I think it turned out oh, so cute. It's so cute. And it had a huge range of sizes. So I think you could make it for like any kids in your life. So that one is fabulous. And then another one that I can definitely recommend that I made for Christmas that I am kicking myself about not taking a final photo of it. It is the Rosie Caldwell quilted tote bag. It is a really, really nice tote bag. <laughs> it's a little nicer than I thought it was going to be when I went to make it because I was thinking in my head, tote bag, that'll be fast. I've also never quilted anything. Um, I was using this really beautiful vintage fabric that I found at the thrift store. It's kind of a Christmassy fabric. Oh, so pretty. I'm so glad I finally got to use it. But I did my first quilting on that and it turned out great. And now I want to do all kinds of quilted things because I didn't realize how easy it is, even though it's very time consuming, but very easy process. Just takes lots of time. It has a drawstring. It has all this, it has a pocket. Like you line the whole thing. It's very nice great thing to gift. I'm definitely going to be making it in 2024. It's one of the videos I have planned to do um, in the new year that I'll bring you along for because yeah, it's just a really like well-finished piece and I'm excited to make it again, but definitely recommend that one. And I'll go ahead and put the free mal dress pattern here too that I made for my best friend that I mentioned earlier that I, you know, did the hack from this. 
um, but the dress itself is very cute. So that is everything that I made in 2023. It was a wonderful year. This is also the year that I started my YouTube channel, so if you're here and watching, thank you so much. I'm so happy to have found other people who love the same thing that I love or love to watch it at least. And um, I hope that we can all chat more in this new year in the comments and stuff. I hope that you'll like and subscribe and put the you know notifications on because I have a lot of exciting ideas for this year, for things that I wanna make and videos that I wanna make. I have been having so much fun making these YouTube videos. I really, really like it here. So I would like to stick around. I hope that you know you guys will stick around as well. And yeah, happy new year. I hope that it's the best year of your life so far. And let's all be creative and brave in this new year. And I look forward to seeing you back here soon. Okay, bye.